series of videos on how to play Chain of Command. Um, we'll look at everything from the basics to what you need to play, how to select your forces, and then deployment, movement, shooting, all in little bite-sized chunks. And hopefully at the end of it, you should have a nice overview on how to play the game and can sort of join in at home and play what is a great World War II game um, without any more waffling. Let's get on with it, shall we? Okay, first off, we will take a look at the basics of what you need to play. So as well as obviously some miniatures to play with, there are a few accessories that will make your playing of the game easier. First of all, the essential is you need the rule book. Um, the rule book contains all the rules you need and some example late war army lists. So you don't have to dig up some army books or anything like that. It contains um, example armies for Britain, America, Germany, and Russia. So, um, and not just example armies like for Britain, you get so the rifle platoon, the paras, etc., etc. Um, America, you get armored infantry, infantry, parachute regiment. Um, Germany, you get Panzergrenadiers, infantry, Falschermäger. So, you get a broad selection. Um, there are other more campaign specific armies available on the Two Fat Lardies website along with some excellent source material for running some campaigns. But to get started all you need is the rule book itself. Um, these are little trackers they just printed out from there and laminated so you can keep track of your force morale as the game goes on. Um, you need counters for what, the patrol phase and some other things in the game. Um, these are MDF ones that I bought from the Two Fat Lardies website, but you can use pieces of paper, print out spaces, whatever it takes you fancy, as long as you know they're clear and you've got you've got sort of four big, four small for each side. That will be fine. Um, these you'll need a lot of. These are just plastic counters I've got for representing shotgun units. Um, you can make your own, you can use a little number trackers, you can use different colored dice, um, whatever you want to use to visually record shock on the unit so you need them. Um, you also need separate colored dice, we've got big chain of command ones again from TFL's website. This tracks um, something called a chain of command dice which we'll go into later in the game, um, later in these video series, which basically goes up possibly as the game progresses and when you get to six you get what's known as a full chain of command dice and you get to do some some cool effects like ambushes and stuff like that um but we'll go into that a little bit more in a later video you also need dice and like i said you need you need some miniatures to play with we'll take a look at an example force um shortly but this is a platoon level game so for the most part, depending on your nationality, because some, because some, like Soviets have bigger platoons, some early war Germans have bigger platoons, but you're roughly looking at somewhere between um, a few cases are down to the sort of mid to late twenties of models. Others go up to sort of fifty odd, but you're roughly looking around thirty six ish models, give or take for a platoon. Um, if you're wanting to do Desert War, for example, the Perry Miniatures boxes come with a whole platoon. Um, so you're with the Deserts, you get the whole platoon, the three squads, the officers, and the accoutrement you need for, for that platoon. Likewise, the same with the deck. Um, the American one, I think you need a little bit more because the American platoon tends to be a little bit bigger and I have some other stuff in it. But for the most part, you're looking at a box and some extra stuff. Um, if you buy the Warlord stuff, most of the boxes are around 30 men. So by the time you buy a box, 
maybe one support element like a like a tripod machine gun or something and a um commander that's usually that's usually a force anyway so i'll just pause it here and we'll have a look at an example of a platoon so here we have a typical late war german force you have to excuse the um Falschemega Panzerschreck that's filling the gap because my Panzerschreck team had a being dropped accident just be, as I was getting out of the cabinet. So that's had an accident. So we've had to count somebody else just, just for the purposes of this little bit of a video. Anyway, here's a typical late war German platoon. It comprises of a senior leader. So he's the dude in charge um most allied armies americans britain americans and british for example have two senior leaders germany by this point in the war running a bit low on good officer material so they tend to only have one they can buy a second as support which is something we'll discuss later but for the most part they only have one and senior leaders in the game are involved in sort of ordering other squads around and organizing deployment. So they're very useful to have. It also has the aforementioned Panzer Shrek team. As I said, I got some Falschmega standing in doing their duty today because I dropped my here Panzer Shrek team as I was pulling it out of the cabinet and it came apart. So they need repairs. So just for, to illustrate this point, those two can stand in. And then you have three squads or sections. These are all identical and they can print. So in the game, you have sections, which are your squads, but those are subdivided into teams for the most part. Russians tend to not have that for all their army lists, but Germany, US and British do. So this is one section and it comprises of a six-man rifle team a junior leader and a three-man machine gun team so in the game the two sections could wander off and do things on their own if need be or be ordered separate it's best to keep them close together so we'll discuss that when we're talking about shock and the game and thing but it does give you flexibility for example if you're into advance up with your rifles whilst giving cover and fire from the machine gun you can do that so this is your standard platoon and it's not like other games where you can have one to three squads this is what you get as your standard platoon in the game this is represented in the book by this little organization chart so as you see you have a force rating for either regular or green, depending on whether they're trained or untrained troops, a number of command dice they have. Then you have the platoon headquarters, which is the senior leader and the Panzer Shrek. Then three squads, and they have the composition of the squads. And so the there's been an errata on the LMG team. It is now a three-man team, not a two-man team. For most well, it's not an errata as such. Most non late late war have three-man teams some late war because they changed their doctrine because they were running out of men had two-man teams so that that's something you need to be aware of because it changes depending on what period you're playing um for the most part we use them as three-man teams for the throughout because it stops con any any confusion so as you know there is a force rating for this platoon and force ratings work in that when you buy your when you, when you pick your army so if you were going for a game and you you were turning up with german infantry and you were playing us parachute paratroopers you know what the core of a us paratrooper platoon is and likewise they know what the core of your platoon is however before the battle you you determine that depending on the scenario a number of support points so this is usually, for example, roll 2d6 
And that's how many support points the attacker gets and the defender gets half of it. But you also look at the difference between force ratings. So you notice that the force rating for these was zero, for example, and parachute, paratroopers may be plus four. So it would mean that whatever whatever rate, support rating were allocated to the Germans, the paratroopers being plus four compared to their zero would mean that the Germans get plus four points to spend. So in that way, it kind of almost balances it out, the rubbish troops versus the elite troops. It, it, it doesn't really because war is never 100% balanced, but it does give, it does allow the the less well the less well trained troops to have more toys. Um this is obviously different if you play a historical campaign. Um these are, there's loads of them available on the website called Plink Size Campaigns and they more or less allocate what you have and you have to keep track of sort of casualties as the campaign progresses. But in a pickup game that this is roughly how you do it. So there we have your your standard German platoon. So for your support points, let's say we had eight support points, that allows us to buy things from from what's known as a support list. If I just open the book to the German support list. So here we have a support list for Germans. This is a generic one that covers most, most periods, whereas there will be campaign-specific ones. So if you notice at the list one, we have things like Mine clearance teams, um, an empty Kubelwagen that you have to put a team in, a medic, stuff like that. And it goes all the way down to list 11, which is things like a Konigs Tiger, Jagd Panther, Sturm Tiger. That's in there for a joke. There isn't actually a Sturm Tiger. Um, if you need to know why there isn't a Sturm Tiger, it's because, um, if you look at the blast radius of a shell from a Sturm Tiger, it's, it would equate to about 36 inches radius on the tabletop. So <laughs> a little bit pointless to have in, in in the game. And its accuracy would mean it probably, you know, would never even hit the board. So let alone hitting the broadside of the barn, it wouldn't be able it wouldn't be able to hit the board that the barn was on. So that that's more for a sort of scenario piece, but it was included. Um, Richard Clark says it was like, an oversight, but I, I think he just put it in to troll people. Um, but most normal tanks are about list seven or eight. So that covers your support choices. So that's it for this video of the basics of what you need. So we're going to now cover some more game-like aspects, like the patrol phase and so on and so forth.